Week six of the NFL season is here. And if you remember, the way I do predictions and do a preview of the NFL week is that I kind of predict the theme of games and how a game is going to go, the general way it's going to be, rather than predicting a score. Because I don't know how you can predict an actual score. But what you can predict is, hey, I think the game's going to go this way. And that's fun for me. That's what I do. Now, there are a couple of big games this weekend where I feel like we're going to learn a lot about the teams we're watching. Two of those games are, you know, for, number one, you have the Browns at the Steelers, where the Steelers are 4-0, uh, but they did beat four bad teams, and they beat four bad teams mostly by one score. So what? how good are the Steelers, really? We'll find out. They're playing the Cleveland Browns, who are 4-1 and one for the first time in a long, long time. So how good are the Steelers? Uh, Big Ben looks really good. I I watch the Steelers and I go, that looks like a playoff team in my opinion. Uh, but another question is, how about Chase Claypool, their rookie receiver? He had kind of a breakout game on Sunday last week against the Eagles. Can he keep it up? Can he stay contributing a lot to the team? And then really, can Baker Mayfield do well enough to beat the Steelers? Can he beat Big Ben? Can he du- duke it out in a duel against Big Ben? I don't know. And that's something I'm really, really excited to watch from Baker Mayfield on the Browns. We're going to learn a lot from the Browns and Steelers game on Sunday, and uh, I'm really excited for it. Now, another game we're going to learn a lot from is the Panthers and the Bears. It's in uh, Charlotte, and the Panthers are 3-2. And, And look, I want to say I love the Carolina Panthers this year. I really love their coaching. I love Matt Rule. I love their offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Their quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, is a really cool story. And a guy that I think is underrated as a quality NFL quarterback. So this team, the philosophy, the rebuild, I really, really find myself rooting for the Carolina Panthers. And it starts with their head coach. He seems like a good guy that I want to see succeed. But it is a rebuild. I mean, on defense, Carolina has a ton of rookies. And my question is, you know, they're, they're fortunate to be three and two, but I'm skeptical. Like, how are they really? I Their fan base keeps yelling at me, and I, I love Carolina fans, but they're like, our team is a playoff team. We're three and two. We're the top of the division. Ah, ah, ah. And I go, oh, well, it's five games. Like it's you've had September and like a week of October. Chill out a little bit. And so this is a game where we're going to learn a lot about the Carolina Panthers. They're playing the Chicago Bears. The Bears are four and one. Now, Nick Foles also hasn't really played a great clean game all year. So we're also going to learn about the Bears. I believe this will be an interesting, close game. That's what I'm hoping for. We're going to learn a lot about Nick Foles. How good is Nick Foles? How much has he grown? I think the more Nick Foles plays in this Bears offense, the more comfortable he'll get. His timing, his chemistry with receivers, everything about Nick Foles. Uh, he had that moment on Thursday Night Football against the Buccaneers where he was yelling at Matt Nagy passionately, ranting about this thing. And Matt Nagy was respectful and listening, and they had it. that's a good relationship between coach and quarterback that I like. So we'll learn about Nick Foles. We'll also learn about the Carolina Panthers. Are they as good as their fan base keeps yelling at me that they are? We'll find out. I'm going to watch. It should be fun, and I hope that uh, it's an interesting close game. We'll find out if that actually happens on Sunday. Now, oh, boy, the Miami Dolphins should wreck the New York Jets on Sunday. The Dolphins are a solid football team. It feels like people aren't giving the Dolphins the credit they deserve as a legitimately growing, underrated organization. I watched the Dolphins 49ers game, and not only did the Dolphins smack the 49ers, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick was by far the best quarterback on the field on Sunday in that game. So Jets quarterback Sam Darnold is doubtful, most likely will not play. Sam or not, I'd pick Miami. Miami's a better team. They're better coached. I see the Dolphins winning on Sunday. I feel very strongly. This is a Sunday night football game. I feel very strongly that the L.A. Rams are going to beat the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are banged up. Jimmy Garoppolo has not been playing well, their quarterback. And the Rams are rolling, man. I love their tight end, Gerald Everett. Uh, Aaron Donald is a problem. Try to block Aaron Donald. Good luck. And then Jared Goff's playing very, very well. So watch out. I think the Rams might, uh, they could win by two touchdowns or more on on Sunday night against the 49ers. The 49ers are well coached. They're really struggling, though. And the Rams got a better quarterback. The Rams quarterback, Jared Goff, is playing much, much better 
than Jimmy Garoppolo. We'll see if that evens out on Sunday, but I, I feel strongly the Rams are going to win on Sunday night football. Patriots Broncos, I also feel very strongly about this game. And I'm worried for the Broncos' young quarterback, Drew Locke. It looks like he's healthy. He's been out with a shoulder injury. It looks like he's back. He's going to play. Honestly, this is a weird thought, but I hope that Drew Locke does not play in this game because the Broncos are going to be missing, you know, tight end Noah Fant, running back Melvin Gordon, receiver KJ Hamler, not to mention Cortland Sutton is out, you know, for the year with a torn ACL. There's multiple injuries on that Broncos team. And I would be very nervous if I was the Broncos coaching staff about putting our young quarterback, Drew Locke, out there against, you know, Bill Belichick's Patriots defense. I'd be nervous even if they had a normal Broncos roster, but a second-year quarterback with a banged-up team against Bill Belichick? Are you kidding me? That seems like a, a recipe for disaster. So I would shield my young quarterback from playing the Patriots if, if he's banged up, there's no reason to play him anyway. I, I hope he sits. I think he's going to play, unfortunately. And then in that case, it'll be a, a tough, I believe, growing learning game for him. Now, one factor here is COVID-19 is going to play a part because the Patriots have had their their building locked up a couple times this week because of COVID outbreaks. And uh, I think because of that, the Patriots win in kind of an ugly, grinded-out game. they got a great defense. Cam will run a couple times. And... Uh, The Patriots are going to win on Sunday over the Denver Broncos. Now, Ravens at Eagles. The Ravens should win easily. This is a banged-up Eagles team. The Ravens are much better as a roster. And the Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz is playing (sighs) depressingly inconsistent, like frustratingly hard to watch. It's just like, come, dude, Carson Wentz is so talented, and yet he's making – Frankly, rookie mistakes. The attention to detail is not there. The Ravens don't need to be special to win. They need to just show up, do their thing, and uh, the Ravens should win fairly solidly over the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Bengals-Colts. On paper, the Colts are a way better team. But the Colts have an erratic quarterback, Phillip Rivers, a guy who throws a lot of interceptions. Like it's, It's a problem at this point of the year. And the Bengals, on the other hand, have a very good, promising young quarterback who is playing surprisingly clean for how young and he is. He's a rookie. So I'm torn here. You know, on paper, the Colts should win the game easily. And they should win the game easily. The Colts are a better football team. But Phillip Rivers never makes it easy. And Joe Burrow against this really good Colts defense is going to be an interesting matchup because it'll be a challenge for Joe Burrow, undoubtedly. Um, and he, he struggled against the Ravens last week. I mean, they, they really put him in his place a little bit because they're a, a really good football team. But Joe loves that challenge, and so I I think the Colts should win. I'm very torn here. This is the hardest game to pick for me, actually, because either the Colts are going to win by a blowout because Joe Burrow gets you know annihilated by this Colts defense. He gets hit a lot or taken out of the game, or Joe Burrow can find a way to stick around and then Philip Rivers throws an interception or too late in the game and hurts his football team like he consistently seems to do. So we'll see. But keep your eye on the Colts-Bengals game. It could be surprisingly interesting. Washington at the Giants. I think Washington wins this game. Washington is playing Kyle Allen at quarterback. He's going to play good, clean football. They're going to run the ball very well. And remember, Ron Rivera is a defensive head coach in Washington playing against a a guy who's coaching for the first time, uh, Joe Judge, a a coach, Joe Judge, first year as head coach in New York, uh, with a young second-year quarterback, Daniel Jones, in New York. Ron Rivera's defense is going to mess with Daniel Jones, not to mention, oh yeah, by the way, Washington has this incredibly gifted pass rush. So I think Daniel Jones is going to be on his back most of the game, uh, getting just railed by... (laughs) by uh, Chase Young as they sack him a million times. I would watch out if I was a New York Giants. It feels like Washington could actually do some damage here and win by quite a bit. Now, eh, quite a bit's an overstatement there, but Washington is going to win this game in my opinion. Falcons-Vikings is a game I don't even really want to watch. The Falcons are 0-5. The Vikings are 1-4. Now, the Vikings are a better team on paper. They should win. But I am curious, the Falcons just fired their head coach, Dan Quinn. Maybe they feel liberated a little bit. Maybe the Falcons are eager to show, hey, it was the coach's fault, 
not our fault. So I, I don't know what to expect here. Uh, I'm not sure. It's hard to get a read on this game. I I don't even know that I want to watch it, though. I, I will say that Kirk Cousins had a really tough game on Sunday night against Seattle. He probably is looking to bounce back. But I just am I'm curious, what kind of energy do the Falcons come out with they might be eager to show, hey, we can still show, we can still play. Like we're good. Our coach was the problem, not us. So keep your eye on Falcons Vikings. I and maybe not. It's it's a lot of bad football. So we'll see. The Texans at the Titans. So the Texans had a short week, meaning they didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for this game because the Titans played. Did I say Texans? I meant Titans. The Tennessee Titans played on Tuesday night, giving them a short week this week. They're the better team. And I believe the Titans win this game. But a short week is going to help make the Texans have an easier time making this game interesting. So there's less time for the Titans to prepare, less time for their bodies to recover. Now, their style, at least on offense, can survive a week with shorter preparation because they run the ball heavily with Derrick Henry. They use play action. I am still very confident in the Titans. But I want to say people are starting to overstate Tennessee a little bit. I I love Tennessee. I love their quarterback. I love a lot of things about them. And and maybe not, maybe overstating is the wrong word, but they're definitely overstating the win over the Bills on Tuesday. Remember, the Titans just smacked the Bills, I believe, 42 to 16. But that was a situation where the Bills kind of handed the game to to the Titans. The the Titans had like four drives deep in field goal range uh, inside the Bills territory. So I am not sure that the Houston Texans are going to lay down the same way the Buffalo Bills appeared to do on Tuesday night. Uh, Titans win. I think it's more interesting and a better game, though, than Tuesday night was for the Bills and Titans. Now, the Lions-Jaguars, I I look at this game and I really am starting to feel like Gardner Minshew is losing steam. I love Gardner. Everyone knows Gardner Minshew is one of my favorite players, if not my truly favorite player in the NFL. Love his energy. I love who he is. I, I am starting to have a shift in my philosophy where I'm going. I watch Philip Rivers unable to run around. I watch Gardner Minshew or Jimmy Garoppolo struggle to throw the ball, push the ball vertically downfield. And I'm starting to wonder, I think you need a quarterback who can really push the ball vertically downfield. And I, I my fear is that this is a game where Gardner is going to look poorly and people are going to start saying, we need Trevor Lawrence on this football team. That's my fear for Gardner Minshew in this game. Everybody in Jacksonville is playing for their job. They're coaching for their job. We're likely going to see a desperate Jacksonville Jaguars team. But I'm nervous for them because the Jaguars have a ton of injuries. And the Lions are, they're not a great team, but they're solid. They're competent. And if you give the Lions opportunities, they're going to beat you. So, I'm nervous for Gardner Minshew and the Jaguars, to be totally honest, uh, on on Sunday. Now, here's a weird thought. The Sunday night football game is the Rams and the 49ers. And I get that at the beginning of the year you'd go, yeah, that's a great game. At this point, it's not a great game. And I, I almost wondered why it wasn't bumped to you know a normal day game because this feels like the Sunday night football game, in my opinion. You have Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. It's a 4 o'clock on the Eastern time start. I guess 425. It's 125 in my Pacific time zone. Uh, the Sunday afternoon game. Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. The Packers against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I am confident in the Packers here. They had a week off to prepare for this game. The Packers are already a better team in my opinion. But I hope this is fun, interesting, competitive. Anytime you have Tom Brady against Aaron Rodgers like oh man it's ripe for storytelling these are two good football teams I think both are playoff teams in my opinion so uh I I'm just excited this is another one of those games where I said we're going to learn from the Browns and Steelers we're going to learn from the Bears and Panthers we're going to learn a lot about who the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are when they play against the Green Bay Packers and then how legit are the Packers I think the Packers are one of the best teams in football if that's true, they take care of business business and do very, very well against the Buccaneers. So we'll find out. I don't know. But I, keep your eye on this Buccaneers, uh, 40, uh, Buccaneers-Packers game. This is the pseudo 
the the real Sunday night football game, in my opinion, even though it's actually not the Sunday night football game this week. Now, there are two games on Monday night football. You have the Cardinals at the Cowboys. <sighs> the Cardinals should steamroll the Cowboys. Uh, I believe it's at Cowboy Stadium. But the Cardinals have this high-powered offense, and in contrast, the Cowboys' defense is really, really struggling. So I, I just, I mean, the Cowboys' defense is a mess. The Cardinals should score a lot of points and win that game. But the Cowboys do have Andy Dalton at quarterback, their new, their backup quarterback now, the starting quarterback after Dak Prescott got hurt. I would love to see the Cowboys rally around Andy Dalton. I, I hope that happens. I hope it's an interesting, fun game. But Dallas's defense is a liability, so I, I have the Cardinals winning this game by a lot. Uh, two touchdowns, maybe. We'll see. Um, but I really hope that Andy Dalton can rally his football team and make it an interesting, fun, competitive game. And who knows? I mean, maybe. How how crazy would it be if the Dallas Cowboys just came out and they smacked Arizona? Like, What if they won like 48 to 15? And you're like, oh, my. Well, I, I did not see that. I mean, how, how cool, cool would that be to have Dak Prescott get hurt? Eh, cool is the wrong word there, but interesting. It, it, dramatic and interesting. If Dak Prescott gets hurt and then the Cardinals come out and just lay the hammer on whatever team they play next, I don't know if that'll happen, but it'd be very, very interesting if it did. Now, the Chiefs at the Buffalo Bills, this is, the I think, the earlier Monday Night Football game. Both of these teams are coming off of losses. It's in Buffalo. And I, I hope, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that it's a hyper-competitive, very interesting football game. My fear is that Kansas City might pull away and win by a couple touchdowns. Remember, both of these teams are 4-1, and one, and the Chiefs' O-line is banked up. But the Bills are missing a few key players, including Tredavious White, their cornerback. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to shred them. I know that. I'm less confident in the Bills' offense, so we'll see. Um, and I, I felt better about this matchup week one. Uh, than I do now. As time has gone on, I've gone, ah, I think the Chiefs might... Well, I, I just don't know. It's hard to get a read. Uh, but my fear is that the Chiefs are going to win by a touchdown or two and pull away late. So keep your eye on that game. I hope it's competitive. I'm not sure it will be, but we'll pay attention and we can hope for the best. All right, guys, that's all I have for NFL Week 6. I think it's going to be a fun, interesting week. Uh, keep your eye. That Packers-Buccaneers game is going to be fun. If you want to watch Nick Foles and the Panthers, you know, Nick Foles play the Panthers. That'll be interesting. And then I'm telling you, Steelers, Browns, that game is going to be fun. And I want to watch Baker square off against Big Ben. We're going to learn a lot about Big Ben's team, and we're going to learn a lot about Baker Mayfield. And I cannot wait to see that on Sunday.